one. Hey, happy Fire. fall. Happy <laughs> fall. We've got fun things to talk about today, Kent. Sure do, sure do. So, because we're in welcome to everybody that's here. We're going to be talking about Nova Scotia and Canada's Maritimes that we're doing from September 14th to 23, 2023. As those of you know, Terry and I, my bucket list are planning quite a ways out. And so we're picking up a few more of the Canadian provinces with us this year. This year we did uh, Can the Canadian Rockies. And many of you that are with us have did the Canadian Rockies with us. We've also done Montreal, Quebec. You know, we've picked up British Columbia as we've come down from Alaska with Vancouver and things. So we're picking up a couple more of those provinces. A little bit of fact, because you know I've always got to do facts and figures and a few things. Canada has 10 provinces um, and three territories that are up to the north. Those territories are Yukon, Northwest, and Nenayut, which was just separated from the Northwest Territories in the late 90s, 1990s. Otherwise, British Columbia, which is Vancouver on the, on the Pacific Ocean, Alberta, which we picked up with Canadian Rockies, Jasper, Edmonton, Banff, Calgary, uh, Saskatchewan, which now that has Regina, the capital of it. Saskatchewan mostly uh, farming, wheat. You think of Saskatchewan with a lot of people that years ago could go up there and, and homestead in Saskatchewan. Then Manitoba, straight north of us. A lot of people go to Winnipeg, you know, uh, fishing, that type of thing, or up to Churchill to see the polar bears, which is on the bucket list, but you know, it's, it's kind of a ways up there. Um, Ontario, of course. Ottawa is our federal capital for Canada, but that picks up Toronto and those that have been to Niagara Falls would have done Ontario. Then Quebec with Montreal and Quebec City. We did that a few years ago. Now, New Brunswick on this one, Nova Scotia on this one, PEI on this one. That's only going to leave us Newfoundland and Labrador eventually. So those that are like to do the states, they're, if they're coming with us, they're getting all those provinces knocked down too. And we, we know in 2024 20, or even 25, we'll go to Newfoundland and Labrador. We, we got yeah. you covered. So hey. outstanding. Not, like I said, we're, not, we're knocking them off. But we are excited about uh, the Nova Scotia and Brunswick PEI. That's an area that, you know, people know a lot about, especially if you've done like the New England in the fall or that New England area. We're just headed that much further north, that much further out into the Atlantic. Uh, to pick up a little bit more rustic in the territory on the drives. Uh, I'm really excited about doing the Cabot Trail because you hear so much about the Cabot Trail with it. And Prince Edward Island and Anne of Green Gables. And right. So, and, and seriously, when you look at the end of Maine, it continues on to New Brunswick. So you, if you've done Maine, New Brunswick is next and then on to the island and of course, Nova Scotia. But uh, um I'm excited to be here as well, Merle, uh, uh, Kent Van Ruckel. I probably represent Mayflower Cruises and Tours. Um, been partnering with Merlia for, I don't know, we're, we don't want to date ourselves here, Merlia, but it's been a while. Um, but we've been to a lot yes, of Yes, it has. When my we stop back and... My 22nd year in travel, Merlia, how many for you? Oh, 30 some. 30 some. Yeah. So let's of course, see I'm only 34, so we kind you of, you know, we have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, well, you know, yeah, it's no, whatever we... it takes. So, well, again, we're so delighted to have you. I'm going to hit my share screen and get on onto this presentation. So for most of you on the uh, screen, if you go to your far right corner, it might say full screen. I like the gallery mode, but uh, you can use whatever one you wish. Uh, for those watching the recording or the live people, we're sincere about just say thanks for a few minutes of your time. I'm anxious to share this beautiful destination. You see our lovely hostess and host Terry right there on the cover page of our Nova Scotia and Canada's Maritimes depart in September 14 of 23. And do recall, September 20, 14, we're going to meet in Des Moines. Marlia always puts us up the night first. So we give a chance to meet each other and we know who our new travel partners are going to be. So, um, Merlia, a word on that? Yeah, definitely be in Des Moines. We've not picked the hotel or the property oh, yet okay. where we're going to overnight. Rhonda hasn't decided yet, but uh, 
it's that's always nice because you kind of put names and faces together and get to see you know kind of see who your traveling companions are going to be we have uh just to come out ahead of time this tour is selling very quickly kent uh we have a lot of those that have traveled together before canadian on canadian rockies and some of them that have traveled with us before so we've got a lot of people that are going to know each other and some new friends to meet so far on the on the registration list because it's going like i said it's selling very quickly good 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 well that's wonderful um so i'm just going to kind of briefly walk you through the day by day. And of course, we all know that the queen of trivia would be Miss, Miss Schultz here. So we're gonna uh, have, have Maria fill in the facts, but I'm gonna give you the little rowdy, a little bit about the company, a little bit about the trip, answer your questions and what have you out of here by dinner. So uh, uh, at least uh, early supper. So uh, moving right along, let's see, we've got a, uh, hey, there it goes. Jumps three slides once. Um, Right dead center is Mayflower Cruises and Tours. We were celebrating our 39th year in 2018 when the gentleman on the left side of the screen, Glenn Maroney, bought us. Uh, it's been a great partnership. Um, Glenn is, he, he, he loves to design and build river ships. So we've got 23 river ships across Europe, uh, now new one in China as well, but we've got all those river ships. Plus you can see he's continued to build his empire. Uh, a wonderful uh, partnership that we've uh, been with uh, since 2019, uh, 2018. So that's a little history there. But what's important to you is we call this the Mayflower experience. It's when I partner with um, Merlia and Rhonda, the people at the North, uh, Northland Travel, uh, we're always looking to make sure there's no surprises for you. We like it included, comprehensive. So right away, that pre-night in Des Moines to introduce ourselves to meet people, but then it's the round trip air the nice accommodations. I'll show you a few pictures here in a minute. Baggage handling from hotel to hotel, professional tour manager throughout. So you, you, you've got Merlia, but we've even got a professional manager from the area, as well as local step on guides. They live in Charlottetown. Let's have them to lead, the, lead the tour. Some neat dining experiences, of course, hosted by Terry and Merlia. You, you know you're always gonna be in good hands. So our goal is life enriching experiences. And that's what I'm hoping you'll attain. Um, we are one. Well, that's one company. thing we like that we like to Kent is, you know, nobody can know everything about every area. And once we get to those areas, we've handed it over to your local guides, and they've done an exceptional job on, on all the trips we've done. They've just known Excellent. the area and all the little ins and outs and and all the good things about it. So we've been really, really pleased with that. So with that, we're, I think we're the only company too, Merlia, that has a guaranteed share program. For some of you single travelers, you check with your sister and your friend and the neighbor across the street. If you can't find a partner or roommate, let Merlia know. She might know someone. If she can't find someone, we'll try to find you someone. And if we can't, you're going to be rooming single at the double price. So there's no single supplement for those looking at there, you're open-minded to go share. Look at our designated single travelers. They look like fun. They're, uh, no, they're just some ladies, but uh, uh, it's just, I think something that nobody else offers. So, um, and before we go, I think a big deal about this trip, again, going September uh, 14th to 23rd, I'm really looking at the peak season to be up in this area. You know, we never sell Nova Scotia, the Maritimes. We don't sell it as a, as a um, foliage tour. But I know Merlia is not going to argue with, this is the best time to be there. If there's going to be color, <laughs> this is it. We're getting and, close to it. Yeah, we're big, getting close to it. And we've all, you know, we've all been uh, Maine in, in, in late September, October. And it, it starts there. So anyway, once again, September 14th to 23rd, I think the map is really going to help you out. Right? Pretty much in the center, toward the bottom, you see an airplane. That's where we fly in and out of Halifax. And flying into Halifax gives us, as you can see, all uh, pretty much a center start for our first two nights. I see the, the, the two is on Dartmouth, but we actually have moved. We're staying in the hotel, uh, Halifax Hotel. So right old town Halifax, great place to start that trip. And then you'll follow the, the lines there. If you look at the two nights in Dartmouth up the Atlantic Ocean coast, look as you go up top right corner. Now we're up toward that Cabot Trail that Maria mentioned, but we're two nights in Bedeck. And then follow the trail where we take a ferry over to the Charlottetown for our two nights there. 
And then down we cross the Confederation Bridge to Shediac, lobster capital of the world, down to the Hopewell Rocks, which I know you've all heard about, on down to St. John for one night. Our next morning, we travel across by ferry and end up with our, uh, our final evening. It's going to be in Halifax before we, or Enfield, small town. Uh, we're going to have our hotel there and then uh, uh, get you flown back home. So um, once you're, you've flown, it's nine days, 14 meals is the flying part of this trip. You'll be a 10th day being here in uh, Des Moines the night before, but the map should give you a pretty good taste of uh, things we're going to see. Um, and by the way, look at Bedeck up there. We're going to go north along that coast. That's the Cabot Trail. So uh, again, just a pristine area. There's just not a lot of people, but there's little settlements, little villages along the way. We make short convenient stops, uh, places to tour as well as places to see. So um, just lots of fun things there. So there's our map. On we go. Let's just start here in Halifax. Uh, as you can see, Halifax, it's not a it's not a burning metropolis. It's a good sized city. It's the biggest, of course, in the area. But we're going to start here in Halifax. I mentioned before the Hotel Halifax is in Old Town. It's about five minute walk to the waterfront. So there are some rooms that have the views of the water. I can't promise that. Some will have city views. Some will have um, the uh, coastal views. But we stay at a very nice property. Never forget your swimming suit on any of the uh, Mayflower or Northland tours. We, we like to make sure um, there's swimming pools to keep you act active. Uh, and often that means there's hot tubs. What's better than a hot tub after a day of touring, right, Marlia? Sometimes you need it, I'll tell you, uh, with the walking on it. So I had to grab a picture of the rooms. Yeah. Yep, seeing the water. So we're not we're not on the water, but we're about five bucks or five minute walk. Well, and Halifax is about 410,000 people too, Kent. So it's bigger than we sometimes think. Exactly. So it's, it's the metropolis. So we'll get you all in, get you settled in and our first day we're off you know when you think about Halifax you do think about the Titanic disaster and exactly how uh, the, the timing and what occurred and, and everyone with a boat basically took off toward it was it happened you know after midnight and uh, the the locals went out so some of these graves aren't even uh, uh, don't have even have a body with them as much as it was the roll call of the ship passengers and they've got a cemetery there. So we're gonna, we're gonna find out Halifax's response to the tragic, the tragedy, um, plus visit that grave. And I think that's gonna be kind of a, a moving moment, but uh, certainly part of our uh, everybody's history. Well, and the Titanic is something that everybody studies, you know, and, and looks into and reads about, so. We're gonna look at the, yeah, we're gonna make a visit to, um, Susan had a great question earlier, is there a lot of inclines? And this would be probably the, biggest incline I can think of would be visiting the Citadel. Um, it was actually started first as a wood fort, but then in 14, uh, 1749, they actually build the foundations, they dug the trenches, built the, the concrete walls. Um, most settlements, uh, they started with the uh, with, a, with um, wooden walls. And this one's, 49 is when they um, built this. It's uh, 1828. Um, is when they finish the, this the project that that you see. So we need to visit that highest part of ground. It's a place that you could see the whole bay as enemies would come in, they would see that. So this uh, and actually, believe it or not, it was Europeans came, but people say this was actually built by the French because something I already evaded, I skipped already is Nova Scotia means New Scotland because it reminded the people so much of Scotland. I think you'll see that in the pictures coming up. But the French it's actually have a lot of that influence, a lot of the, the, the Scottish influence. So, but uh, the French take credit for building the Citadel. So, uh, and then uh, of course we had British occupancy as well. So a lot of European different melting pot uh, was another place for them to escape for religious freedoms. Part of the reason they came over here. So no trip is complete to this area without Peggy's Cove. Um, that's the absolutely. one picture you always see. That's the one. <laughs> and then I, I, I was looking for the other one I always have, and it's it's, it's just a piles of these uh, lobster traps, the, the wooden tied with string yarn. Um, it makes a great little souvenir as far as uh, something to bring home, but 
um, just the idyllic fishing city. And that's what they do. So as we walk through this little Peggy's Cove, you, you, the people are genuine. They're just a small town like, oh, they've got more travelers looking at, hey, what do we do here? They're just real down to earth. And I think this theme is what you're going to notice right away, even in Halifax. You know, Merlin mentioned the 400,000 city. The people were just so genuine when I was there. Uh, I always said, you know, this is one of my favorite farmer tours. My farmers love this tour. Because anyone you ask, kind of, kind of, they were they were local. They talked about their agriculture, which is one of their top industries. Uh, tourism is that tourism is actually listed as number three, with number one being agriculture. And we don't think of home, such small countries. Always, there's yeah. so much agriculture. Well, fishing <laughs> is obviously the largest part True. of their agriculture part. And then, of course, moves on to their uh, uh, manufacturing. And then, of course, third would be their um, tourism. So you know how valuable we are to them. We're going to have two nights in Halifax. And then we're going to work our way up that Atlantic coast. And we're going to get to Alexander Graham Bell's museum. And a lot of you say, oh, just a museum. This is the only museum in the world with Alexander Graham Bell's exact actual test products. So it, it's the first phone is there. The first trans um, communication machines are there. So 1952, they said, you know, we got all this real stuff we need to put in. And they created this museum. So in 52, part of the, um, uh, the history of, of the area is certainly a visit to Alexander Graham Bell's museum uh, that we're going to enjoy. This one, this one surprised me. I wasn't expecting it to be there. So I think it's it's going to be a very unusual stop for us. It is, but it, what I, I again, it, it was authentic. And that's what I love yeah. about this whole tour. It's authentic. It's not the lookalikes. It's not maybe this happened, could have been. It's his 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 stuff. Off we go to Badak. Badak is a nice little flowing city that just the town, I should say. We got a neat little property, the Inverary Resort. I always like the word resort over a hotel. Resort means what? It's got extra Point. accommodate, extra services for people. <laughs> and got a strong feeling if a person really needed a massage, it resorts the place to get it. Uh, so this just looked like a very nice property. And I uh, took a little picture from the backside. You could see it actually overlooks the water. This is their 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 uh, outside pub, outside restaurant. So uh, Merlia, Terry, imagine having a nice cocktail here. Some you do. To say that's the place you relax after a long day. Two nights. You sit out there, sit out there and just enjoy the water. Exactly. So we have two nights at the Inverary Resort, which overlooks um, the, the, the town of Bedeck overlooks Brastior, the, the lake, Brastior Lake. And you can see again, we see a waterfront and it's uh, part ocean, part lake, um, inland lake, the uh, ocean on the other side. So um, Charlottetown itself, when we get down to uh, Prince Edward Island, that's actually the end of that St. Lawrence Seaway. So when we're out here, we're a peninsula on the Atlantic Ocean. But the water on this side actually comes from the St. Lawrence Seaway. Our, our uh, Cabot Trail is going to be around this area. We'll see the, the Cape Breton Island. The Cabot Trail, you can see, look at the beautiful interstate, high-speed interstate through this area. You can see it's just going to be a fabulous drive. Um, there's where you need those professional drivers to take great care of you. And once again, just imagine it doesn't matter what side of the coach you're on. It's a beautiful ride all the way through. They have a national park in this area, Highlands National Park. And I think here's one of those Scotland pictures. That, doesn't that remind you of Scotland? And in fact, even that this uh, this picture just looks like one of those locks of Scotland. And uh, so we've got lots of fun, uh, fun pictures, but, and then we stop at these little towns along the way. And some have are just convenience breaks, a place for coffee, a place, a place to maybe do a little shopping as far as uh, grab some souvenirs, but they're all again, just these intimate little coffee shop towns. And I think that's the best, it's just postcard images along the way. So two great nights in Bedeck with the one full day doing the Kevin Trail. I think just you know driving that is just going to be with the scenery and everything. Just it's going to be a relaxing day, but the scenery is going to be phenomenal. And then I think we throw in our season. Merlia knows how to pick them. 
I think you're going to start to see what leaves, what color. I think you're going to be there right on the in the prime time. Um, we're going to take our our, our our NFL ferry. Our motor coach actually comes aboard and is going to ferry us over to Prince Edward Island. Now, this is a pretty nice little boat. It uh, holds lots and lots of cars, but it's um, uh, kind of a, it's 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 made for this hour and a half commute. Not too long, but it's like seventy five minutes. They've got Wi Fi. They've got a restaurant. They've got a small bar. They've got plenty of things to do. And and you're going along the coast. It's 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 a it's a beautiful ride. It's a, again peaceful, safe, easy going. But they've got all the modern conveniences as well. So it's a good place to maybe update your Facebook and post some pictures because you'll have um, Wi-Fi as you cruise from A to B. Uh, and um, all of our hotels, all of our properties do include free Wi-Fi. I always have to joke. I'm not promising high speed life and Wi-Fi. It's all we, we got Wi-Fi included. My We're favorite saying is it is what it is. So if it's offered it maybe it is what it is but right right uh we're arriving at prince edward island or they as the islanders say they were the islanders that's their name it's the garden of the gulf um it's a phenomenal island and some even call it spud island now when you look at uh, prince edward island if you look at a map um it's a long narrow strip of land and, and we're talking narrow it from from two up to 40 miles wide 140 miles long so it's a little longer than you think but it's also the smallest of all the pro uh, provinces that uh, maria listed earlier it's by far the smallest as well and we're going to go visit that uh, did you read the population i think that might even have uh i think it's 287,000 uh, people yeah something like that it's because not as much there again you, there it is there it is, yeah, 167,000. <laughs> I checked it. And no there idea. again, that lighthouse picture is one that everybody sees There's, so often. We call it the money shot, right? You got to have a money yeah. shot. But did you know, Merle, I bet you didn't know this. 99% of its energy is wind powered. They don't have really? any processing plant. There's no electric, or the, the electricity all comes from wind. So all they have is backup generators. To, to cover if they need a gasoline or oil um, to supply heat, lighting, and all of their energy comes from the wind. I, that blew me away. So I, I can assure you, we can all learn something from PEI. Yeah, well, and you're coming right off a lot of water there for that wind. Going to have a pretty steady wind. So our property here for our two nights is going to be the Rod Royalty. Uh, Rod, kind of a a chain around that area, some beautiful properties, but this rod does one of the, the, the downtown locations. Um, again, very pleasant. And I think, oh, this is exciting. Look on the left side here, Maria. See that blue tube? It's a 105 foot water slide for Terry to, you know, straighten your back. Right. If you're, if, if you're right. a little tight, a little tense, nothing like yep. a 105 foot water slide to, to That'll take away all inhibition. <laughs> yeah, I will real fast. Nice I, pool, I, though. I nice was pool. looking at the I was looking at the pool going, that's nice. Wait, that's that blue 105 foot water slide. Anywho, so for you, um and wear me out hearts, climbing up to it. Uh, part of it, right? It's all part of the adventure. <laughs> Half the fun is getting there. Come on, you've said it a hundred times. Because our next we day, go. we're going to wake up and head out to Anne of Green Gables' home. Now, I'm going to guess, Marla, you're probably the history gal on, on Elsie Montgomery, Lucy Montgomery. But did you ever, funny did how, you ever read Anne of Green Gables? No. Probably not. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> probably, pro probably not. But, you know, it's amazing. Uh, so many of us read those classics and read the, read the Anne of Green Gables yeah. books. Uh, for those that you don't, that aren't familiar with it and should be it is a classic uh i believe there are six books out not in count not counting movies and reproductions or i think there's maybe six stories in the original series but Anne was an orphan girl that thought she was going to be adopted and ended up in the home of uh older siblings man and a woman 
And it is all about her adventures growing up in this home. They thought they were adopting a boy or going to get a boy. And they got Anne. And Anne was quite the uh, challenge for them. And so the whole book to book to book goes on with everything that goes on in Anne's life and growing up here in this area with it. And then it does actually, the series goes on further than that and ends up with her married and you know, down, but the first few are the ones that most of us read uh, that talk about it. So it's going to be interesting seeing this home that, you know, she quote unquote occupied per se. The, with the whole story. And, and, yeah. and when, you, when you come up to it, it's just like, you know, you're driving, you're driving, it's like, poof, oh, here's the welcome sign. But when you see the house, it's over, you know where you're at. It's, it's, it's one of those, there it is, stand up type of, of, of spots that, the area is beautiful. The home is gorgeous. It's a beautiful setting. They actually offer horse drawing. The carriage rides around the grounds, if you wished. Um, we came actually entered through the barn area on into a, oh, it happens to be a craft shop, visitor center. Um, so just, just a, a nice stop. So don't think it's just a tour that the, the people in the house are going to be in character. You're going to find these uh, red -head, uh, red haired uh, pigtailed girls everywhere and of course that's the look you're going to find that straw hat with the rolled up brim um are very popular and it's just it's it's such an icon of this area but uh when you put it with the story i'm sure a lot of you are very anxious to see the whole area around well, the green and the books the books were first published in 1908 so the whole story is that turn of the century as you said people in costume the whole the whole feel is going to be that turn of the century yeah. type area. I think it's just going to kind of bring it to a different place, a different time, if you will. So that's going to be wonderful. Charlottetown itself is a population of 40,000. It's grown uh, 4,000 over the last four years, is what I was reading. Um, Charlotte was, of course, the, the queen of, of uh, King George III, named it Charlottetown. Prince Edward Island was his son, Prince Edward. Uh, would soon be king, um, but Charlottetown is kind of the heart and heart and center of it. Uh, I mentioned before, 167,000 people, 40,000 live here on the, uh, in the in Charlottetown itself. A uh, couple, it's, it's a mixed picture there, but just a little taste of that old style, that old downtown. You could see a lot of 18th century buildings, 19th century buildings. So a, a neat little history to it. But an easily walkable town. Um, our, our property, the Rod, is is in a nice spot where easily walkable area. Um, if you have a free evening, be able to slip out, grab a bite, lots of pubs, a little bit of Scottish influence. They've got several pubs, almost Irish in, in nature, um, but just a peaceful town. I, I, again, when I talk about this tour, it's always, it's not a five-star tour. It's not five-star, but it's a warm, cozy four, four and a half, five. Uh, it's just comfortable. It's peaceful. And everybody wanted to help you, which that's when I was there. And I, I, I'm sure it hasn't changed at all. Look at the colorful buildings, you know, it's different colors to paint. It's, it's, it's a great little downtown, as well as moving right from the residential to the, the city area. But uh, we're, uh, our, our property's in a nice place. After you do that slide, you'll be ready to do some walking. Um, we are going to take you to a musical performance. I keep asking, now, are we seeing the show, The Anne of Green Gables? And I understand we're not. So I just want to clarify, uh, we do have a musical presentation at the Confederation Center for the Arts, which as you can tell, beautiful property. And we'll be uh, having a show at there that one night. Our next day out to the only national park of Prince Edward Island, which would be the PEI, Prince Edward Island National Park. Uh, you see, here's where you really see the red soil, the red sand, high in iron, iron concentrate, a little like our, our Hibby in our northern Minnesota, the, the, where the steel is drawn out of, and uh, those beautiful red sand beaches. But the, sand, the ground's that way as well. And you will find out their other nickname is Spud Island because they claim they produce 25% of all of Canada's potatoes. That's a lot of potatoes in a small place. Yeah. So huge potato uh, growing and that soil is just con conducive to great potatoes. So when we talk about our Idaho potatoes, this would be the Idaho of Canada. <laughs> potatoes here. So 
There you see that national park. Our two night stay there is gonna be kind of a treat. Now, it's really interesting. They, they've got a, a ferry system and back in the, in the middle, uh, well, it was around 1982, it actually hit the ballot when they said, we'd like to make something permanent to get from the Prince Edward Island to, to, to shore, to, to mainland. They had ferry services going both sides, but they never had a permanent structure. So you were limited when the ice was coming in or out, you might not be able to transfer as easy. So one year they got a little start and they said, uh, 1982, they put on the ballot, we need to, we need to build a bridge. And they built a bridge. So Merlia, here's a trivia for you. How many pylons are into the water? How many stations are there? 70. 44. How many miles oh. is how wow. many miles is the bridge? Is it about four miles? Eight miles. Eight. Double double Eight my guess and I won. Mile bridge. How high is the highest point off the water? There's a spot where the, the where the where the boats go through the the bigger ships sail through. Yeah, like the they sunshine bridge. Span. They've got a span that's 830 foot long. One span, 830 feet long, almost a city block. And that one span is the highest off the off the water. How high do you think that'd be? 200. Oh gosh, I would even. I'm afraid two, to guess. 200 foot off the water. So. Most of the bridge is 100 feet. The, the, the road level is 100 feet over the water. You're over the water for 6.8 of those eight miles. 6.8 is over water. So it makes it the longest bridge over an ice covered water. Now, of course, we're going in summer. There's not going to be ice then. But to build a bridge, think about it. To build a bridge that can stand the test of ice, that was the challenge. Yeah. So 44 different pylons, they built the bridge across, I love this, to this day, we've got a 200 foot height above the water on your 44 piers that you see. That is an eight mile bridge, folks. This That's year they had to raise to the toll. Across. This year they had to raise the toll. So another trivia question, how much do you think it takes cost to take a car across? And let, me, let, me, let me rephrase that. How much do you think it costs to take the Confederation Bridge from New Brunswick to Prince Edward Island? What do you think? Mm, eight bucks. Zero. Really? It's free to go to the island. It costs you to get off. And this year they had to raise, true story, and this year they had to raise the car fee to $50.75, the biggest increase in history just to match the thing, it was always $37 to cross the bridge off the island. You can go free, but you gotta pay to get off. So, yeah, to get home, yeah. Kind of interesting, That's funny. Mayflower, we could be going onto the bridge this way and off the bridge the other, but we still deem it, we, 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 we pay, we don't pay the ferry as much as we pay the bridge. It just, yeah. you could, if you're a traveler up there, you could actually drive on to the, on, the Confederation Bridge and off on the ferry and it'd be much less. So if you ever travel this area on your own, you can do that. Anyway, I think it'll be a sensational yeah. drive. It, it was, and on it, it was, like it. it was one of those things you just, it was, you kind of see forever. It was one of those deals. So on our way down to the stop at Shediac, Shediac is the lobster capital of the world. They caught an eight pound lobster, the world's largest lobster. So of course, when you enter the city, there's the big sign with the world's largest lobster that they've built, but they claim an eight and a quarter pound lobster caught in their waters. On our way to the Hopewell Rocks. Now you folks, we've all heard of high low tides, but we're, come on, we're land lovers. We're Midwesterners. If you're from Des Moines, from Iowa, we're land lovers. We got a little river, but you've never heard of a tidal bore and you've never heard of tides that do what they do here. You know, uh, you go to Boston, they have tides, the water, uh, it, it, it's drawn by the, the gravity of the sun, the tides will go up and down due to the gravity of the sun and the moon. The crazy part of the Hopewell rocks, and what these are called is the flower pot rocks, flower pot rocks, and uh, they've had one tip, it's, it's eroded enough to where one actually fell over, um, but they can, you can, you can walk them by day, and then 12 hours later, you can kayak them. Because these tides, the tides. are from 32 yeah. to 46 foot on a full moon, 
they can be up to 46 foot. And imagine this, that's every 24 hours, but the tides come in twice a day, twice a day. So the water level can change three to four foot an hour. This blows you away how this yeah, is baffling. Sandy Beach, Sandy Beach, take a look. Three hours, it's half full. Six hours, it's full. 12 hours, it's gone again. It goes up and down every 12 hours. And one will be primary, which is the sun's gravity. And then the, the, the alternate is the moon. Tides between 30, how, how, how tall is your house, Maria? You know, a two-story house. 24, it, yeah. Be taller, you definitely bury it. Cover your house twice a day. <laughs> Low tide is going to cover you. Yeah. So it's an amazing place. It's got a, a great viewing center. One of my favorite things to watch is they have a time lapse. You can actually buy the DVD, but a time lapse video and that water goes down, water goes up, water goes down. <laughs> it's just it's six hours. It changes. So quite a place to see. From the visitor center down to the beach is 99 steps. I'm going to warn you about that right up front. The visitor center to the beach, 99 steps. I'm just warning you up front for you, energetic energizer bunnies. I'll wave it, everybody. You want to get your feet dirty, and I will tell you, this is the day I didn't. I don't wear white tennis shoes or anything with suede, because you're gonna find it's the nice sandy beach That's you're walking, and then you, and then you find these soft right. spots. Poop your feet. Um, we ruined a lot of shoes because no one told us don't wear white shoes or suede that day. Just be warned. Yeah, the only problem is it's 99 down, but you have to do 99, 99 back up. up. Yeah. Anyway, what a phenomenon. <laughs> and a tidal bore, if you can imagine the rivers, you know, they, they all crest and up and down. But the water comes in so fast that the rivers start running backwards. They run upstream. And a tidal bore is when it actually pushes so much water up a stream, it actually causes a tidal wave, a, a wave up the river. Can you imagine? Where else in the world can you see it? Yeah. Um, neat, neat. We're gonna take the Digby Ferry. It's gonna bring us back across. Now we're coming back from, from uh, uh, over back to Nova Scotia. We're gonna stop John. Yep. from St. John over uh, to the Grand Prix National Park, Grand Prix. Um, this is where the Acadians were actually, they, they settled, this was their headquarters. This is where they, they called home and they got deported. So this is their monument. Now, when we talk about the Acadians, it was their own special religion, again, from all the different European, a lot of Gales from, from Scotland we keep mentioning, but it does come down to the word Acadian, something you have to realize that a lot of them got deported, they were sent down to the US, and they ended up in a place called, we call it New Orleans, and if you say Acadians quick enough, Acadians, 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 Cajuns, 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 it converts to Cajuns. And those French Canadians that were persecuted went down to New Orleans and became Cajuns when they were too lazy to say Acadians. Have you ever heard that story? No, that <laughs> makes sense. Every makes time sense. you go someplace, you learn something, whether you want to or not. Well, and the name of this, I heard Grand Prix National Park, and I'm thinking, they don't do racing up there. Nope. <laughs> so it took me a while to look at it to right. realize that it was a historical park. I need to say Grand Pre, Grand Pre. There's a there's a mark above the E I couldn't find on my keyboard. Uh, the Grand Pre <laughs> National Park. But again, in honor of these people, that again were 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 being um, persecuted, so they left. And, and anyway, I love this picture. Your tour manager is brags about the Canadian beers. Um, we all know there's five main Canadian beers. The Molson is or Molson definitely number one. Molson Pilsner. Labat or Labat Blue, the Moosehead, major beers. But uh, this, I just thought this picture was hilarious. Your tour manager is anxious to meet you. They're celebrating with the beer right on the shore, waiting for us to join them. Um, Canada, the, the 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 gates are open. We can cross over. Vaccination is not required. They were trying to do a thing called Arrive Canada when you okay. went. That's gone. Okay. They said, no, oh, you know, we really like this. Billions gonna... of dollars spent and it's gone. We're gonna we're gonna make sure this is something we're gonna keep doing, and of course too much too much rhetoric follows it. Too much issues. Um, it's gone away already as well. So at this point, and things can change. At this point, yep. no requirements, no vaccine requirements, no testing to go to Canada. You will need an active passport as always. 
need to have six months beyond your return for validity. So do keep in mind, take a look at your passport. And that's the 23rd. And we get back to Halifax Airport and have to fly home. So to share some fun parts, it's 3884 per person, two in a room. Singles, a little bit extra like always. Uh, we got the pre-night in Des Moines. We got the round trip air transfers, baggage handling, 14 meals. That means all your breakfast. Four dinners are going to be on your own because we have two lunches in there as well. So keep an eye out where you'd like to eat some nights. Um, and I always kind of like Can I that. share the exciting? Can I share sure. the exciting thing? Yeah, Rhonda absolutely. has managed to extend our free air for a limited time, Kent. Bam! So, Bam. Uh, limited time yet on our free air. She was managed to extend that a little bit for those that are want to take advantage of it. It's out there yet. I'm excited about that. That's yeah, that's outstanding. And for attending the presentation and all those that are already signed up, Berlia, we've got a hundred and twenty-five dollars savings per person. For each one of you watching, we know, you know, you've got other things to do. We, we value your time. We appreciate your attention. So we'd like to reward you as well with $125 savings. They tell me to give it for today, you know, this week. And I'm like, ah, oh, Friday's too soon. Merlia, when do you, are you home next week? I am here next week. Yes. So Before I leave for the med, you know, if it's okay, Thursday, it must be Paris at our house. Yeah. <laughs> So you've got um, Ron, of course, always does a great job taking reservations, Merlia to answer questions. Um, but we're going to give $125 savings to November 4. And the free air, the way it sounded to me, sounded like you could maybe get that through the end of November, right? So We're hoping. We're hoping. Rhonda, like I said, Rhonda's been working on it. And right now it's still there. So it's uh, to be able to take advantage of that, plus your extra savings. Uh, it's a great time to be signing up. <laughs> it's a great time. Plus, you do need to recruit. People need to know there's a motor coach move. You got, you got room for a motor coach. Typically up in Canada, it's about 44 places. And we're not quite half, but I'll guarantee after today, right, Merlia, we're half full. Yeah, so we are. In, it's incredible been, it's start. It's been booking very quickly. Incredible start before the presentation, quickly. just off the brochure. Well, I, you know, Kent, I think people are thinking we need to think further out you know i've done my i did a presentation not long ago on my 10-year planner but some of these offers to get travel moving again we're still seeing some of these extra good offers and if we can get them booked far enough out we're able to take advantage of them and that's what people need to do absolutely and and so many have <laughs> that's great yeah yes <clears throat> for you that have traveled on a mayflower trip remember that little coupon that said uh, Mayflower money that you can take off this trip we're even taking some of those before pandemic because you couldn't spend them during the pandemic we're, we're trying to make sure we can honor those as well so for you that have Mayflower money or chance there to save your spot simple $600 deposit hold your space now we recommend 850 deposit because then it's going to include your traveler's protection plan Traveler's protection protects you before the trip and on the trip. So we think it's a good one. Uh, Merlia, I know you shop a lot of insurances, travel protections. We use TripMate, do a great job, but at $250. Why we put it at the time of deposit is because then it also includes your pre-existing medical conditions. Right. Something that might have been, you forgot about 10 years or at least put it to the back of your mind. It flares up, you're still covered. but the bright spot on this travel protection, it's a cancel for any reason to the day prior to departure. Any reason, the day prior to departure, you would get all your money back, deposit, payment, all, everything but the travel protection of two, $250. So what a minimum amount to protect your investment. So most people buy it. Final payments is gonna be around July 6th, meaning Merlia probably send a bill around the 1st of July. Um, but the final payments due July 6, but that travel protection is canceled before you go. Any reason on the trip, it's additional health protection, baggage delay, trip interruption. We had plenty of that the last few years. Hope it's all gone, but yeah, all those, don't we all? But the big one, it's emergency transportation. How do I get home if something happens to me? I sprain an ankle. I can't fly with the group. I can't travel the group. We'll change your flights. We'll get you home. 
that's all only like I said for two hundred fifty dollars. So uh, I have to leave you with the old hope. I always hope you plan to join us. Um, this is a beautiful area, and as you can see, we're kind of touring across the Canadian provinces. If this is your chance to go, and especially with a few of your friends, and certainly hosted by uh, uh, Terry and Malia, um, I hope it's your time. So love to have you. So Malia, oh, yeah. we hope we hope you we hope you'll join us. It's going to be a good tour. It's going to be, I think, a relaxing tour. We're going to see a lot of things, but I think it's going to be a good relaxing tour with everything. So, you know, give, give Rhonda a call and, and get those deposits in so you get that free air. Absolutely. So um, we're going to, um, we're going to jump to the Q&A section while we, we, we're still rolling here. Our time is good. Um, so we're going to start with, I am here. I can't get my camera to work. So you can't see Susan. We're just thrilled you're here. No one's camera's working. So it's not you. It's we, we, we in, a, in a webinar, we show the pictures so we can get you to raise your hand, put your Q&A, but uh, that's okay. You're great. Um, and uh, also with this, Rachel is going to have a copy of it and she will put it out on our Facebook page and uh, it's also on the website. So you'll be able just to link in and get that, Sue. Great. Number two is the very handicap accessible. Merlia, you can maybe expand on that. When you were in the Canadian Rockies, when you were in Vancouver Island, they don't have OSHA. We didn't have, we didn't okay. have any problems. No OSHA, but it was it was convenient. We had several that well were with uh, canes and things, and we didn't have any problems with it in those locations. And I think that's it. Walkers, so, canes. So uh, in the ferries, uh, I would think that's a big enough ferry, you know, that if we're off the coast, there would be something because you know certainly people are back and forth. Right, right. It's an easy so, call to make and find right. out. I just can't say handicap accessible because wheelchairs and this isn't a wheelchair yeah. tour. So um, it, it's kind of hard to define. Is it handicap accessible? I don't, you're, it doesn't have OSHA. So I got to say it that way. Um, let's go on to Susan. Susan's asking what temp temperatures are we expecting this time of year? Oh, I think it's going to be perfect. It's going to be great touring weather. I never like it too hot. So when we get to September, it's fall temperatures. Merlia, done any research on the weather? Definitely, definitely lay, layering with it. Yep. It's yep. also going to be a tour to, you know, jeans are going to be very, Terry yep. and I are going to be in jeans, uh, layering no, rain jackets with it. No dress up night, but the Confederation nope. Center of Arts might be where I tell you everybody, wear something clean. You know, uh, yep. that would be your nice night. <laughs> as much as it yeah, gets. but otherwise, uh, casual. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm planning on going with the fleece line jacket because we're going to find, remember we're up, we're up on the Atlantic. So we're going to have cool temperatures in the evening, like we do in the Rocky, like we do in the mountains. So it'll be cool temperatures in the evenings. I would say probably high, high, high thirties could be in the evenings that be. time of year. I, I would have said that time you might probably be more mid to high forties, but I think you might yeah. see some seventies. I really, at that time of the year, yeah, the way it's then, been, I think you'll still see some seventies during the day. Yeah, during during the day we should be pretty good, pretty good with it. But definitely, definitely layering, daring type things and uh, something for rain with it. All right. Next question is: I've already paid. Great. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you. How does the one twenty five savings work? It comes off the final payment. So when you get your final payment, uh, you'll have one hundred and twenty five dollars taken off. So even if you signed up before, you uh, you definitely have. Uh, uh, that savings will be taken off your final payment. So no worries there. Got you covered. And last, food other than lobster. Oh, goodness, yeah. Um, of course they do. Um, we'll be asking if there's any special diets. There's always uh, gluten-free uh, seafood, uh, you know, um, uh, allergies and things like that. Just like we're on the planes, um, you know, peanut allergies and whatever. So uh, other yeah, food We definitely lobster. need to know that ahead of time. And, and you let Marlia know. Sometimes I tell people around the registration blank, you might put on their gluten-free um, special diet requested. Taking a, taking a walker, uh, just just kind of for good good information sakes yeah. as we make the any, reservation. Any little thing that, that Rhonda needs to know when she visits with you, we need to yes. we need to get down in that record. You know, the same with if we need help at airports. Yeah. Uh, we need to know that way ahead of time so we can let Mayflower know so that those accommodations are made we'll, for you. 
wheelchairs are ready and all that. So, and then as far as alternate food, obviously they, uh, they serve more than just uh, uh, lobster and fish, uh, but you will have some spectacular fish for you that like fish. Um, but there'll always be a chicken, uh, you know, beef, pork, alternate meals. So no worries there. I think you'll, I think you'll be fine for the food. Uh, Kent, Terry just looked up. It's mid sixties day, mid forties night in Halifax. And Terry's also looking at a 50 year average. I think the average is yeah. going up. What do you guys think? I mean, come on. We had a gorgeous September. We had 70s. Oh yeah, we have. 78. And like I said, uh, on the water, <laughs> you know, it's going to be a little cool on it. Exactly. Now, my best recommendation, uh, when you have your document party, um, document, two weeks before you fly, you're going to get your documents. We're either going to have a Zoom or Marley will have a Zoom and answer your questions and passport uh, if there's any new requirements to cross the border. Um, but that's the time I tell people, go to weather.com. Weather.com, type in Halifax, and then look at the 10-day extended forecast. And I'm to the point now, it's like, Flat out, I, I, nothing's average anymore. Terry just told us the average temperatures. Is anything average anymore? He'll have, <laughs> he'll have all those major cities blocked within two or three weeks out, and he'll be monitoring them day to day in all the major cities for us. Yeah, so that's a good lot. idea. Um, I see temperatures are going to be warmer than the average, and uh, what it's been the last few years, I, I think I'm right. So, uh, I've got more questions here. Maria, you can help me. A uh, friend watching with me and my husband, can we all get $125 savings? Absolutely. That's for per each person. individual. It's per person. So, Norm, I wish you had 20 people watching with you. You had a watch party. You, you know, you find me 10 more, I'll do another one. But anyway, uh, so no worries there. Um, where do we leave our cars if we leave from Des Moines? Diane's got a good question. Marlia, what do you think? Where do we leave cars if uh, we leave the hotel that we choose for the overnight does parking for the hotels for the cars is that right no charge yeah there's right. so much per day ron, no ron always picks a hotel that uh we're able to leave our vehicles wow oh well, wow and That's then they shuttle us back and forth to the airport true airport hotel yeah you hear the car in there trans and nice. I, again i can't tell you which one it'll be right now because there's some conventions and things going on that time in town so that with some of the hotels we've used but uh that's always figured in that our cars we can leave our cars very good great answer yeah. great answer all right so for any of you still watching live if you want to swing your cursor across the screen you can see a q a section the chat section um obviously uh, merlia's got a number on the brochures uh, Rhonda's taking reservations as you can tell half the practically half the bus is full um so a lot of you already have done that so that's wonderful but um, from my side, from Kent Van Rukel, Mayflower, um, thanks for being a part of this. Thanks for just trying to get your answer, questions answered. I truly hope this is one of those on your bucket list that you can join Terry and Marlia and just have one more life enriching experience. We'd love to have you. Back to you, Marlia. Same, yeah, same for us here uh, from Terry and I here in Urbandale and all of us at Northland. I hope you'll join us. Uh, we will have a copy of this out on the website and out on our Facebook page. So please share it with friends or anybody you've been visiting about on it. Like I said, we want everybody to be able to get, take advantage of that free air that we've managed to renegotiate right now and the extra uh, uh, savings that Kent's offering. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be casual. It's going to be laid back and it's mm. more provinces off that bucket list. Yeah. So thanks <laughs> awesome. for joining us. And thank you very much, Kent, for visiting with us today. Uh, delighted. So thanks all. Safe travels to all of you. Take care. Bye.